Hi folks, Roland Martin here for DECA Marine Batteries. You know, a lot of people ask me, am I a battery expert? And I tell them, well, yeah, I'm kind of a battery expert. I've been working with boats and, and batteries for 30, 40 years. Okay, that's one reason. I've also been working with DECA Marine Batteries for several years and I've been answering a lot of questions. But what makes me an expert, and could you could be an expert as well, is, is the internet. I Google stuff. And I Google batteries. I Google AGM series. I Google the marine battery series. And all sorts of answers and questions are there on the internet to be discussed. But let me take uh, some questions right now. Some of the leading questions that people always ask is, is, number one, can a deep cycle battery like this big marine master be used to start the engine? The answer is yes. You can take a marine master uh, for marine and RV power and put it in place of your cranking battery. That's what I do, and a lot of people do because there's depth, there's electronics and depth finders, there's power poles to work, there's all sorts of lighting, even stereos on the boat. There's a lot of, of, of reasons to use a deep cycle marine battery for your starting battery, but you don't want to go the other way around. You don't want to use a starting battery for your trolling motor, for example, because it doesn't have that reserve power. So you can go the other way. Use your marine and RV power for the whole boat, and then you're fine for the solar motor and the regular regular engine. Okay, another question. Now, when I store my boat, should I disconnect the battery? Absolutely. There's phantom power going on there. The trolling motor up front will take a little bit of current drain, and after a month or so, it'll totally discharge any battery. It doesn't make any difference what kind of battery it is. Okay, there's all sorts of lights that might be on, and then the batteries also just kind of self-discharge, but that's another issue, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So disconnect your battery when you store it. It's a good idea. Now, <clears throat> what can I do? The second, third question is, what can I do to make my battery last longer? Well, it's a simple matter, just keeping it clean, because see, batteries work on an ionic principle. Ions of electricity go through the, the medium of sulfuric acid and go from positive to negative. Okay, actually, they go from negative to positive, so you want to know about it. But anyway, these electrons are running around everywhere. If the battery is wet, then the ions of, of power, ions of electricity, will go all over the battery and get into the system and short out. And, and so a lot of people ask me, say, gosh, my battery only stays charged for about a week. I said, clean it. Clean the battery, son. <laughs> get that thing go, and it'll probably last a whole lot longer. Okay. Now, another question is, can marine batteries, any kind of battery, can... Can they be completely recycled? The answer is totally yes, 99.6%, I think it is. I had the privilege to go into East Penn Batteries in East Penn, Pennsylvania. It's the second largest battery facility in the entire world. They have train loads of, of, of batteries coming in, train loads at a time, hundreds of thousands of batteries an hour coming in to be recycled. They're crushed, the, the water, or the wet goes out to become the sulfuric acid again. The crush is all vibrates to the top and heated and, and all the plastic ends up being the blast plastic. It might be a green battery, might be a red battery, might be a white battery. It doesn't make any difference. When it's all recycled, it all comes out black. Everything is black again. So it might be a brand new battery being black. But anyway, black is, is what happens when, when you recycle the whole thing. Now, the lead is 100% recycled. You get every speck of lead back into the system. There's very, very little uh, waste of, of recycling. It's really a fascinating process. That was the most interesting manufacturing facility I've ever seen in my life. So 10,000 people work there at East Penn Batteries, and they actually make the deck of series batteries. It's really, really, really a neat place. Okay, another good question is, uh, what are some of the good reasons why I should buy, say, an AGM battery versus a wet battery or a marine battery like this flooded battery here. Well, this is a cheaper battery. I mean, I can get it for 30% less money. And it does a lot. It has a lot of amp hours and it does a lot of neat things. However, the AGM goes one step farther. The AGM actually lasts longer in the period of time. This battery is good for using it every single day like I do for a little over a year maybe, cycling it every day. An AGM battery cycles a lot longer, a couple years, two or three years. I don't know, just I've never run one down. I've never had a problem. You can get more life out of an AGM battery. Okay, 
Another thing, it's safer. An AGM battery, NASCAR uses them. Of course, they don't spill. There's no, there's no liquid to spill out of an AGM battery. It's all held in, in, a, in a wet form to the, to the glass mat. Tech. See, AGM is advanced glass mat technology. Okay. Okay, now, another thing, big thing about AGM over regular battery is that an AGM battery ch charges faster. It charges as much as five times faster. So if you want to get a quick charge in a hurry, you can get it with an AGM battery better and quicker than you can with a wet battery or a flooded battery. Okay. Now here's another thing about AGM that I like. Okay, it maintains its power curve. It comes up to 12 and a half, 13 volts, and it comes along full power, full power, full power to the very end of the cycle when it's just all out of power, boom, it drops off. Okay. A regular battery, a wet battery like this one, has a power curve that comes up to a little over 13 volts. It comes down 12, 11, gets a lot, 10 and a quarter volts, and finally is discharged. So you know it's kind of falling off because things aren't working as well. Your depth finders quit working. A lot of things happen before the, the battery is actually discharged. But AGM battery holds its full power to the end. That's a beautiful, beautiful feature. Okay, let's, let's talk about other questions that you might have. And that is, what about charging the battery itself? How should you charge the batteries? Well, one thing that I like to do is use a trickle charger. When I'm not using the boat a lot, I use a trickle charger that has about two amps of, of, of current. And it drops even less than that in the case of an AGM battery, because I have AGM batteries. It probably is less than an amp for just maintaining uh, its self-discharge. See, all batteries, like I say, self-discharge. The AGM batteries self-discharge less than a flooded or wet type of battery. Probably half as much self-discharge with an AGM series battery. Okay, so <clears throat> I use the trickle charger. Now, when talking about charging batteries again, you can hurt a battery. If you charge it too much and, just, and it gets too hot, there's all sorts of, of gases and hydrogen builds up and it can be explosive. The, the levels actually evaporate down in the battery and the, all this sulfuric acid boils itself out. So there's all kind of safety issues with bat of any kind of battery. And the AGM batteries are prone to, to self-destruct as well. If you overcharge an AGM battery, just totally overcharge it, you can hurt that over uh, you can hurt it by overcharging it. So there's some charging issues. You have to get the charger that's recommended for AGM series batteries. And it'll say that on the on the battery charger. And that it, what it is, and once it's finally fully charged, then it goes back to the trickle charge. What they call the float level. In other words, all batteries have a level, once they're fully charged, they have a small little self-discharge and it's, it floats right at that level. Okay, float, float level of charge. Okay, now, what is the last question I want to answer? Can mean, marine batteries lose power when you're not using them? Oh, yeah, I've already answered that question. Marine batteries and all batteries can lose power when not using them because there's a thing called self-discharge. iPhones, if you use an iPhone and just lay it down, not have anything on, it'll just self-discharge itself in, in, in a couple days. Okay, batteries are the same way. So again, I use a tickle, trickle charger to keep a small uh, charge going to keep that float level, what they call the float charge level of the battery. That's Float level equals the self-discharge level. Okay, so you just have to slowly charge them up a little bit and you'll be fine. Well, listen, any more questions, go ahead and ask Siri on the internet or just, I just type stuff in. Uh, type in AGM, type in maintenance-free batteries, type in a uh, Marine Master Deck and you'll find out a lot of things about batteries that you didn't know about. I know I did. In the meantime, watch my show, Fishing with Roller Martin. I'll show you more about batteries.